Whether or not they are our direct ancestors, the fossils at Malapa and Rising Star point us toward a new way of thinking about human evolution. We have a strong tendency to want to draw simple lines between species and make nice family trees. And we have to understand that that's our need, that's our desire, that's not necessarily the way that nature works. It's very natural to think about human evolution as a sort of family tree in deep time. But evolution is much more complex than that. Evolution is bushy. There are different experiments. Populations try different adaptations. They try different ways of being about the world. Paleoanthropologists talk about the bushiness of human evolution as a metaphor for the many types of early hominins and the difficulty of knowing which one led to us. But even that metaphor may not do justice to the way evolution works. Nature is messy. Nature is complicated. Nature does not uh, really respect our desire to put fossils into neat bins and to sort of name nice, neat species. Both Sadiba and Naledi have a mosaic of Australopith and Homo features. They seem to show that at the dawn of humanity, there were multiple evolutionary experiments with small-bodied, small-brained, upright-walking apes. Scientists now know some of these varieties of late Australopith and early Homo live together at the same time. And some of them may have been interbreeding. These aren't fully formed species, and there's a lot of interbreeding between these groups. Some adaptive features are evolving in one group, other adaptive features are evolving in other groups, and by interbreeding, those are coming together. And if that's the case, we may never be able to draw neat lines between any of these groups and, and later Homo. Perhaps now, we need a new metaphor to help us understand our evolution one that expresses better the dynamic and fluid nature of it. Now, perhaps the best metaphor is a braided stream. And that's brought on by discovery of these mosaic hominids like Naledi, Sadiba, and others. They're showing us there's lots of experiments going on. Some of these evolutionary experiments died out. Others came together and interbred. The ebb and flow of genes through these groups was probably so complex that we may have to give up hope of discovering a simple linear evolution. So uh, imagine in your mind a glacier in the top of a valley. And what happens is as it melts, it creates many, many rivulets. And some of them are large and some are small. And they all move off down the valley. And almost inevitably, at the end of that valley is going to be a lake, of which some Maybe the majority, but not all are contributing to. I think we have to begin looking at these species we're finding as almost individual channels in a braided stream. It's clear they have something to do with the in-population, and that's us, the billions of human beings alive today. But it's hard to tell which one's the most responsible for us being here. <laughs>